Coming up, police are asking for help in identifying a suspect wanted in an arson and burglary at a Fargo business. A West Fargo teacher is receiving one of the profession's highest honors, but her job could be in jeopardy. And meat lovers gather at the Fargo Dome for Rib Fest. Details on the mouth-watering event. Hello and welcome to the Nightly Review. I'm Tom Tucker. We begin with a look at tonight's headlines, then a closer look with comments tonight from a candidate for a local school board who is talking about understanding why student outbursts occur in the classroom. And in tonight's one-on-one, -on -one, a conversation with Fargo mayoral candidate Shannon Roars Jones talking about what she calls the spectacle surrounding the townhome project involving her family business. But first tonight, the Fargo Police Department is asking for help in identifying a suspect involved in an arson and burglary at a business this past Monday. Video footage provided by the owner of 1FPM Gaming shows two suspects involved. One has been identified, however, police are trying to identify the second Caucasian male suspect, who was last known to be wearing a yellow Timberland hooded sweatshirt and dark pants. Anyone with information in the case is asked to contact police. A former Fargo police officer who was terminated for the way he handled a report of missing children and a stolen vehicle report, he will appeal his firing in a hearing set for tomorrow morning before the city commission. Justin Nachatillo says it's a matter of defending his professional reputation. In February, the Fargo Civil Service Commission voted 4-1 to one to uphold the firing of Nachatillo. His position was terminated in December. A Fargo man driving a minivan was killed in a crash involving a semi yesterday morning in Monoman County. It happened on Highway 59 near White Earth just after 7.30 in the morning. The state patrol says 37-year-old Joshua Kraft crossed the center line and broadsided the semi. The semi driver suffered non-life-threatening injuries. West Fargo High School teacher Michelle Strand will be spending 11 months in Washington, D.C., where she'll have a chance to help influence education policy for the nation as the first North Dakota teacher to be named an Albert Einstein Distinguished Educator Fellow. However, Strand, who has taught physics and AP physics at West Fargo for 12 years, may not be able to return to the high school after her fellowship is over. Her request for an unpaid leave of absence was denied by the district because of the current teacher shortage. Six days remain in Cass County's June election, and Fargo mayoral candidate Arlette Preston says she remains focused on addressing housing issues across the metro. I keep going back to housing because I think it's an issue that's not only here in Fargo, but nationally we're seeing housing prices jump and um, wages aren't keeping up with that. And even though we're seeing wages going up, it's not at the same pace. Commissioner Preston says she's also looking to improve communications with the public using events similar to her recent public forum on street racing. You can learn more about Arlette Preston and all the local candidates running for office by going to WDAYRadioNow.com. A former North Dakota state senator who recently resigned says he is unable to return his state-owned laptop and iPad because they were seized by law enforcement officers. Ray Holmberg stepped down June 1st following a report that he exchanged 72 text messages with a man jailed on child pornography charges. Holmberg was North Dakota's longest serving state senator. Planting in North Dakota is delayed because of wet conditions. Experts say the dam conditions are helpful in fighting drought conditions, but make it difficult to get equipment into the fields. Insects and weeds popping up because of the extra moisture are also causing issues. The deadline for planting some crops is approaching and has passed for other crops. The state of Minnesota is reporting a record number of job vacancies. The state's employment department reports vacancies are up 68% compared to 2020. Currently, there are 214,000 job openings in Minnesota. That's the highest in state history. The state will conduct a campaign called Summer of Jobs to connect workers and employers. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem is moving forward to the general election after clinching the Republican primary. Noem defeated challenger Stephen Haggard by a large margin in yesterday's race.
for the Republican nomination for South Dakota governor. She'll face Democrat Jamie Smith and Libertarian candidate Tracy Quint in November. Incumbent John Thune is the clear winner in the Republican primary for U.S. Senate. And the Rib Fest in Fargo is now officially underway. The festival kicked off at 11 o'clock this morning in the parking lot at the Fargo Dome and runs through Saturday. More than a dozen vendors from Texas, the East Coast, and the Midwest are firing up their smokers with some international flavor added by a team from Australia. In a closer look tonight, West Fargo School Board candidate Scott Kasprick says addressing student mental health concerns in schools can come down to understanding why classroom outbursts happen in the first place. It's just the way the things, they try to lash out at times and you just need to make sure that they understand why and so forth. And, and in the school, it's the same. Is that there needs to be discipline on it, but it needs to be a kind of a setup and a structure of so understanding of if the kids aren't doing what they need to, that they can be treated as they, as they need to learn to how to be an adult. Kasprick tells WDAY News First he is also looking to address teacher burnout by supplying educators with resources to help reduce their workloads. He also wants to focus on what he calls responsible growth. If you keep adding more and more students and not being able to grow the schools and adding on to the schools and stuff like that, eventually it'll just get overwhelming for even the best teacher. And everybody has different days and some good, some bad. So as long as you can try and, and keep the classroom sizes small or at least manageable, then the teachers can at least teach the kids what they need to know and everybody can learn from it. Scott Kasprick is a political newcomer and one of seven candidates running for four seats coming open on the West Fargo School Board. Four of the candidates are incumbents. Well, we hope you find the Nightly Review to be a great source for news and information for all that is happening in the FM Metro. If that is the case, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button below to make sure you are always up to date. Well, hope you had a chance to spend some time outside today as weather conditions were quite nice. For the latest on the forecast, let's check in now with meteorologist Justin Storm in the Skywatch Weather Center. Thanks, Tom. As we head through the rest of this evening, we will hang on to a slight chance for a couple light isolated showers. Otherwise, partly cloudy through tonight. Temperatures will drop into the lower 50s with light wind and we'll hang on to light wind for your Friday. Partly cloudy out there again. Temperatures rebound into the mid and upper 70s and we'll see a slight chance for a couple light rain showers Friday night. Now into Saturday, partly sunny. It will be breezy with highs near 80 and a slight chance for a few showers and storms in the late afternoon towards evening and those will favor to our east over in the lakes country. It could happen to you or someone you love. One moment, one diagnosis can change everything. Thankfully, there's a program that helps caring people uplift families through a crisis. Lend a hand up, raising financial help and hope through community benefits and online campaigns. A program that boosts generosity so gifts go further. Lend a Hand Up helps you help your neighbors. Learn more and give at lendahandup.org. Welcome back to the Nightly Review. Fargo mayoral candidate and state representative Shannon Roars Jones is my guest for tonight's one on one conversation. She's talking about what she calls the spectacle surrounding the townhome project, which her family construction business is still looking to complete after missing an earlier deadline with the city. I first asked Roars Jones to comment on where the project stands now as the city sends a breach of contract letter to Roars Construction. Well, you know, I think. Overall, the feeling is disappointment that it has had to turn into this sort of spectacle that it has. Um, you know, yes, while Roars acknowledges uh, and has from the beginning that we missed this deadline, Roars has been in constant communication with the city on how to resolve the issue. Um, we, were, we were working with the city on trying to figure out whether or not the developer's agreement needed to be amended or how to address the issue prior to the meeting on uh, May 2nd, where Dave Pepcorn um, 
kind of went off on on Jim Roars and and so that was that was completely unexpected because we had already been working with city staff to try and resolve this issue but since that point you know we've just reaffirmed our commitment to build these townhomes we've always intended to but with the cost of materials increasing with uh, the delays from the other projects and our need to stage materials on that specific site where the townhomes would be built, there was no way for us to start the townhomes any earlier than you know than this point in the pro in the project. Uh, so I think disappointment that this has turned into the public uh, scenario that it has, but um, nothing has changed from our perspective. We always intended to build these. We have been able to. Um, really sharpen our pencil and and bring these to a project that we think can still be affordable for the neighborhood based on the costs that we have right now. And we're excited. Uh, we made the application for the permit last week, and we're excited to break ground as soon as we get that application process from the city. You referenced Commissioner Pepcorn. What are your thoughts with regard to how he handled his concerns regarding the townhome project? Well, I think Commissioner Pepcorn's behavior just really um, brings to the local level the lack of civility that we've seen growing in, in our political arenas. Um, you know, it's okay to disagree with someone about um, what your beliefs are, what their beliefs are, but the way that he went down to the personal attack level and personally attacked Jim Roars and his character and his reputation that he has built in the community for the last 46 years is wholly accept unacceptable for uh, an elected person speaking to a constituent. Roars Construction has previously pointed to supply chain issues and increased supply costs as factors which prevented the company from building the townhomes under the initial contract with the city. Are those issues still impacting the company's operations? And if so, how are those factors being mitigated to allow this project to move forward? So, I mean, cost increases are a factor for everyone doing business in the city of Fargo. And while we have other projects of our own that we've chosen to put on hold, we have a commitment to finish this project. And so we're working to keep um, the project uh, designed and, and uh, constructed in a way to minimize those costs because I'm sorry those costs because we want to make sure uh, that we can provide a project or a product that is affordable to the people who live in this neighborhood who might want to purchase uh, such a townhome. But regardless of the cost, we are committed to getting this project completed in a timely manner. I'd like to thank Fargo mayoral candidate Shannon Roars-Jones for joining me for tonight's one-on-one -on -one conversation. Roars-Jones also talked about the recent attack mailers targeting Commissioner Dave Pepcorn, who is running for re-election. She also talked about the endorsement that she has received from Governor Doug Burgum. You can hear her comments on those topics tomorrow night in part two of my interview with the candidate. Well, that will do it for this Wednesday night, June 8th, 2022. I'm Tom Tucker. Thanks for watching the Nightly Review.